Hi, I'm Elizabeth Townsend Gard um, from Just Want a Quilt, a research podcast coming out of Tulane University Law School. Today we have a video, a video, um, and we're doing a sew along, a sew along where Gigi Bai will be leading us through Jen Kingwell's The Gypsy Wife Quilt, which is awesome. Um, so these are videos that Gigi will produce um, and help us understand how to do it. And Corey Dutton, um, a law student, is going to learn to quilt. So um, it's for beginners, advanced people, even law students. Um, and it will be great. So uh, I hope this helps. So where do you find the pattern? Um, Jen Kinkwell's pattern can be found at Amazon. It's again called the Gypsy Wife Quilt. It's super popular. You can also get it at Uptown Needle and Craftworks here in New Orleans. Just um, look them up online and call them or at any quilt shop. So get the pattern and join us. Hi, we're ready to start working on section five. And to start off with, we've got several um, blocks that we'll be working on. We're gonna do square and a square, um, two different sizes at first. One is, uh, or actually two of them are 4.5 unfinished that it'll be, end up being um, four inches once it's in the quilt. Then one, and you can find it on page 22, um, that's a little smaller. And then we're gonna do a square and a square with courthouse steps. And then we have the half square triangle block, which we already made a few of these last time, the half square triangles to go into our next one. And then um, a pinwheel border. And we're gonna start with the square and a square. Um, we talked about this before, downloading these um, templates to use for paper piecing from Generations Quilt Blocks. They're free. It's a lovely site that has lots of information. And when you get them printed off, you can measure and see that this, from the dotted line to the dotted line, is four and a half. That leaves you with a quarter of an inch on either side for sewing it into the quilt. And so it's four inches from the dark line to the dark line, which is what it will be finished when we're done putting it together. We're starting with, um, I'm going to start with a four and a half. We've done these before, but I like to just review so everybody is kind of on the same page. The first thing I do is I draw a line a quarter of an inch up from where number one meets with number two. And that helps me because my pieces are not exact. I'm using scraps and so you see how big this piece is. It's hard to know where to put the piece on top, but if I fold it at that quarter of an inch seam line, then when I go to put this piece on top to sew it, I know that I have enough that when it's flipped it's going to cover the shape and it's going to um, still have enough seam allowance, the quarter inch seam allowance. After that, it's um, fairly easy to see where you need to put the next piece. So we're going to go and sew on this side. Notice that I pinned this on. I kind of wanted this little guy to be in the middle. It's called fussy cutting. Um, so when you fussy cut, you might have a design that you want to be in the center of your square or your, or your block. And so when I um, put it on, I pinned it with this little flat head pin. These are great when you're paper piecing because they are flat. If you use a pin with a little bit of a head, then it's going to roll and it's going to bump up. So it can distort just ever so slightly. So these are nice pins to use when you're paper piecing. And what we'll do is we'll flip this over. Lots of mistakes happen when you're first learning paper piecing. But you put your first block piece, which has to cover all of that area right there, that first block piece um, needs to be on there, making sure it covers everything. And it is wrong side to wrong side of your paper piecing. Then you place your second piece on where it's going to sew from one to two, and then you'll sew along this line. So when you put it under the sewing machine, it's facing up so you have your line to sew by. And you want to try and have a presser foot that is open so that you can see the line and see where you're going to keep on track. One last little thing. Remember, when you're sewing on the line, you want to be one hair inch, not inch, one hair over so that it's a scant quarter of an inch so that when you fold the piece back, you it doesn't end up being too small. So we'll be right next to that line, a little scant 
quarter of an inch. Okay, so we've sewn our first piece on um, on the line or close to it. We remember we want to go down to a smaller stitch length, really small. That helps to perforate the paper so that when we take the paper off later, it will be um, easy to take it off. We also want to sew through the two outer seams out here, this um, past the lines. Um, and that way it'll hold it in place when we go to put our next piece on. And um, the other thing we do is we fold our paper back and leave our fabric forward. And then we measure a quarter of an inch and cut off all that extra. So here's the extra that I cut off. I just rotary cut it right off and that leaves us with a nice quarter inch seam and that piece flips up. Later we'll trim the whole block and have it be the square. So then we go to work on the other side, the opposite side of where we just were. I'm able to take my pen out now. Now if this piece keeps flopping and I feel like it's in the way, I can pin it down. Um, so what I do next is I find my fold line next to my, I'm going to corner three now, and I fold it and kind of finger press it right here so that when I take my next corner piece, I can lay it up above about a quarter of an inch. Let's use this one. I haven't pressed that one yet. Okay, about a quarter of an inch. And then I flip it up and just hold it up to the light and make sure it's covering everything before I sew it on. You may pin it if you wish. You don't have to. But you're going to flip it over and run it through the machine and sew right along this side. We'll go back and do corner four and corner five and then we'll trim it all the way up on the dotted line so that it'll be a nice square and a square. Um, that will measure four and a half for once it's sewn in. This is Elizabeth Townsend Guard from Just Wanna Quilt. You've been listening to Gigi Bai take us through an aspect of the Gypsy Wife Quilt by Jen Kingwell. Make sure you get the pattern. You can get the pattern at Amazon or Uptown Needle and Craft Works here in New Orleans or at your local quilt shop. Um, you need the pattern to be able to understand what's going on and then um, Gigi helps us through it. So join us. Come play with us. Come to our Facebook group, Just Want a Quilt. Uh, go to our website and be part of our newsletter where we'll help you through the Gypsy Wife Quilt. Um, that's JustWantAQuilt.com, spelled W-A-N-N-A, Just Want a Quilt. Um, and of course, listen to our podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and if you can't a chance to like it, on those, it would be super awesome. <laughs>